one of the weirdest pulling paths that I have ever seen from a street lifter comes from two individuals. The first is Daniil Ostapko from, I believe, Ukraine, and the other is Artem Shurikov from Russia. Usually, when you're doing a pull up, you can expect to pull up in a smooth fashion. You don't have anything like a mid pause. You don't really change the orientation of your elbows significantly. Your elbows, they could stay in one direction, meaning maybe they could just stay laterally or they could stay diagonally even. Sometimes I've seen people where their elbows are directly in front of them but they keep it there. The other way to do a pull-up is sometimes you'll start from a side angle and then slowly transition in a smooth fashion to a more forward front angle. So basically your elbows go from a frontal plane and then they slowly go into a sagittal plane so that the elbows or in front of you. However, with these two individuals, and I'm sure for other street lifting athletes that I don't know about, things are different and the body compensates the load that they add to their body in such a strange way where you're starting from a dead hang and then the way these guys pull is with an initial burst of explosivity with their elbows parallel with the frontal plane and then midway through the rep, there is an extreme change in elbow direction from the frontal plane right into the sagittal plane. And within this transition, there is a momentary pause and then the rep continues with a slower velocity than the first half of the rep until they get their chin above the bar. And if you guys noticed the way that the elbows are orientated, so the way the elbows are orientated, starting from the side, you'll notice that this pulling motion uses more lats. This pulling motion uses more biceps and forearms. It tells me a couple things. Uh, number one, it's interesting because they have an initial burst of speed, meaning they're very explosive in the first half of the rep that just basically confirms that the lats are a stronger muscle than the biceps, right? That makes sense. But somewhere in the middle, for whatever reason, maybe it's their rotator cuff mobility or it could be just the lat muscles not being strong enough when they're contracted uh, beyond the, I guess you could call it 90 degree mark or the halfway mark of the pull-up rep. The elbows orientate themselves and the biceps are being used. And I think it tells us that the lats are basically strongest in the first half of the rep and then the biceps maybe are not the strongest in the second half of the rep, but are more mobile for the lockout. So although you might find it easier to just stick with this orientation throughout the entire rep, we might find that within this portion of the rep here, it's going to be extremely difficult to lock out versus if you were doing it in this fashion. So it pretty much implies that a bicep curl, specifically the upper portion of the bicep curl, could actually be beneficial for you to lock out the second half of the rep and to finish that part off. I know some people say that there are no weak points in a pull-up rep and that the only thing that you should really work on is to simply just be more explosive at the bottom portion of the rep. But when you have a form that looks like that, I feel like then you can distinctly separate the pull-up rep into two different phases and work on each one of those individually. The second half being you could use bicep curls to make that portion stronger. So I found that really interesting and I wanted to bring that to light because it is a pulling motion I don't even do. I sometimes see it in my own recordings, but it's not always there. And I feel like it definitely would be more apparent when you start to do heavy singles or heavy doubles even, or when you're just about to reach that limit and approach zero reps in reserve. But that's all I had. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe.
and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.